In contrast to loader, action is a function that will be triggered whenever a page sends out a non-get HTTP request. In other words, we'll most likely trigger it whenever the user submit a form. And now let's see how we can get started with the action function. Similar to loader, we can define the action function inside the route object. And just like its sibling, it will also take in an argument that contains two properties, the parameter and the request object. Parameter is referring to the dynamic parameter inside a URL, and the request is the outgoing HTTP request. We'll console out both the parameters and the request inside the function body just for demonstration. And now let's see how we can trigger the action function. Let's go to our user details component and let's build a form so we can have form submission to trigger the action function. Now we can't use the native HTML form because it doesn't work nicely with React Router. What we should do instead is to use a form component provided by the React Router library and this API is very similar to the native HTML form. We'll provide an action prop and also a method prop. And within the form, we'll create an input field and give it a name of email. And we'll give it a little bit of styling so that it's not that ugly. All right, let's go to our browser and give this a go. I'll enter some random things inside the text input and hit enter. And we can see that in the console, the console logs that we entered earlier has appeared and they're logging the parameter and the request of this form submission. Now, what we would write inside the action function is really up to us. Typically, we would write the corresponding functions to send the API request to the server. And to do that, we often need to read the body of the request. And React Router makes it simple for us. We just need to read the form data method from the request object inside the action function. The form data method returns us a promise, so it might be better for us to use a wait here. And we'll also console out the form data just for demonstration. And now if we go back to the browser, upon submitting the form, we can see the form data printed out in the console. Now this form data is a native form data object where we can't read the content directly. If you want to read the payload of the form data, what we can do here instead is to convert it into an object by using the object from entries method provided by JavaScript natively. Let's try again. And now we can see the content inside our form data. The key is the name of the input and the value is whatever I have just entered inside the text field. Isn't that neat? All right, let's move on. Similar to loader, we can return whatever we want inside the action function. Typically speaking, we will return the result of the API request. Let's quickly mock up some response here. And let's say the API returned us an object that contains an error saying that the email that we just entered has an invalid format and is wrong. Now the UI will need to receive this message and display it to the user. To get the result of an action, we need to call another hook called useActionData. Let's console log out the action data just for demonstration and we'll go back to the browser. At the very beginning when the component was first mounted, the action data is undefined because the action function hasn't been run yet. Now if we submit the form, we can now see that action data has now got a value. And the value is exactly what we have returned inside the action function. And now we can go ahead and show this message inside our UI. Let's do that. We will put the error message directly underneath our input field. So the idea here is that we will write a short circuit that checks if the error field is presented inside the action data. We are using the question mark optional chaining operator here to check if action data is undefined or not so that our code doesn't break. So if the error field is presented inside the object, then we will load a span that shows the error message. All right, let's go back to the browser and run this bad boy. And now the moment when I submit the form, the error message shows up which is exactly what we expected. Okay, so that was a quick overview on how the action function works in React Router. We will continue to dive deeper into the other features provided by the React Router in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Key takeaways for this lesson. Action is triggered when a component submitted a non-get HTTP request. Just like the loader function, the action function received the URL parameter and the outgoing HTTP request instance 
in its argument. We can receive the result of the action function through the useActionData hook. This is particularly useful when we want to display the error message from the API or the success response from the API result. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you would like to see more content, consider supporting us by becoming a member at my website, acadia.io. It is similar to Patreon, but in return, you get a lot of premium tutorials and lessons. If you can't become a member, that's totally fine. We are just happy that you are here. We spend a lot of time and energy to produce high quality videos for you. Feel free to check out our other videos on YouTube and if you can leave a thumbs up, you will really make my day. If you subscribe, I would jump for joy and I'll make more videos for you. Thanks for your support and I'll see you next time.